Hi, my name is Eric Anzalone and this is What Matters Most. Today we're at Cutter's Mill, the natural pet place in Chalfot, Pennsylvania. Cutter's has a wide variety of natural, organic, and holistic food for cats, dogs, and small animals, as well as a vast assortment of gotta have it accessories. It's like this thunder shirt for dog anxiety, which happens to be in my size. Daddy may need to borrow this. <laughs> but Cutter's also has something that other pet stores don't. Animal Communicator Emerald Decor. Emerald's intuitive communication work is based in the belief that we all have the ability to communicate with animals. And she encourages the natural telepathic gifts in her clients as she conveys that telepathic information. So let's go find Emerald. Ah, thank you. Emerald has done more than 10,000 consultations and she's been interviewed by Fox Television, NPR, she's been featured in numerous newspaper articles and donated her consultation services to many animal sanctuaries and rescue organizations. It goes without saying, she also enjoys speaking about the wonders of intuitive animal communication and she offers uh, classes and instruction for people who wish to refine and revive their ability to talk with animals. Welcome, Emerald. Thank you. Very right. nice to so, see you. Nice, nice to see you too, and many thanks to Cutter's Mill for having us here, um, which Great is place. almost like a, your home away from home. I love this place. So, okay, we all grew up with Dr. Doolittle. We have all, most of us have heard about the horse whisperer, the dog whisperer, but in your own words, what, what exactly is an animal communicator? Uh, I love the idea about uh, Dr. Doolittle and horse whispers, but I'm actually an animal listener. I, I love that phrase because uh, we all talk to our animals. It's such a pleasure. But, uh, you know, shifting consciousness and listening is, is uh, the trick. Uh, uh, available to everybody, by the way. But I've done it a lot, and so I have practice. Yeah, so what, what are some of the reasons, then, why someone would uh, seek out an animal communicator? So the main two reasons are behavior and health. People want to know why their animal is doing something mm -hmm. uh, that may not be in keeping with what they want, or they want to know how their animal is feeling, yeah. if they're sick or why they're sick. And I have to ask, because, because you can read animals, can you read people? Because <laughs> <laughs> we, we, uh, uh, we are all animals. Right? I love that, yes. I do read people too. I, um, I like to say, although this is quite true, that people and animals are the same. Uh, when I do readings, pretty much my eyes are closed. Uh, people, of course, are more verbal, and I'm one of them, so there's a slight difference. It's not exactly the same. Mm. Okay, and like, as you said, we're, we all have this intuitive capability. But what inspired you to explore this ability, or was there an event? Or you had a dog, uh, Tar Tarjan or Tarjan or really close Trajan. Trajan, okay. Yeah, uh, yes, he passed. I was devastated. My ex-husband was uh, just as heartbroken as I was, and we didn't know what to do. And we contacted an animal communicator, and we both kind of looked at each other and we went, oh my God, we feel a little better. And, uh, but from that moment, I wanted to be a communicator. And then I just, uh, I studied with three different uh, teachers, and uh, people teachers, and then of course a lot of animals. Yeah. And then uh, how, how has being a bridge then changed your life? Or ha <laughs> it, it has changed your life. I mean, I mean do you have this whole new perspective? Or? It has so changed my life. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah I, uh, I just wanted to talk to animals. I remember the second class I went to with Penelope Smith. She's uh, been doing this for a long time. And uh, she, there was someone in class talking about the fifth dimension and angels and stuff. And yeah. I went to myself, wow, I just want to talk to animals. But <laughs> now I believe everything. Yeah. But is it annoying to you because you can communicate with animals? Like if you go to a park and there's lots of dogs around or the birds, I mean, is it like you're overwhelmed with 
information coming in? You or? know, I'm never annoyed. Uh, I, I truly love animals. I mean, pe people, animals, and regular animals. Uh, no, I need to be in shifted consciousness uh, to uh, talk see. with uh, people and animals in an intuitive way. So, no, I don't walk around in a shifted consciousness. Every once in a while, someone who really wants to speak may come through, through sheer will, but n n that's one of the secrets not to be overwhelmed, is to be in shifted consciousness, shift out, shift in, shift out. Is that, is that what you had to learn when you were being mm -hmm. trained? That's it's all like I had to learn. It's almost like being able to turn it on and turn it off, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that kind of thing? And that's what I teach people to do, so that uh, people aren't overwhelmed. Some very sensitive people um, are, are overwhelmed by their own intuitive abilities. But if you can shift it on, you can shift it off. It's good. Because we're all connected, uh, you know, animals, human beings, we're animals. Uh, what, what have you learned about the relevance of the animal world and the people world? Are there there are things that are uh, like strike you as being um, similar, but with nuances. You know what strikes me most is that there is no hierarchy. You know, w because we run so much of the world, we think that we're at the top of the chain, but mm, not true on a soul level. In my experience, of course, you know, I don't know everything. Uh, but uh, every, everybody is equal on the planet, I believe, and maybe beyond the planet. <laughs> right, so even from, from the most intelligent human being on the planet, whoever that may be, down to uh, a snake. And I'm not saying a snake's not intelligent, but we're all, there is no hierarchy is what you're saying. We're all... We're yeah, all... and I, I don't always remember this because I'm a human, but boy, if I'm in shifted consciousness, I remember it. I have talked with snakes. I find snakes to be very enlightened and elevated. I was uh, doing a consultation with a snake who was lost in a car. They didn't know whether the snake was still there. It was a companion snake. And uh, this, it was a female snake. Uh, she showed me in a way that is not cognitive, that life and death are connected. And my girl dog, who helps me in consultations often, she sits behind me on the bed when I uh, do consultations over the phone. I said, Nej, did you hear how that snake said life and death were very equal? And we all know this, but to feel it is something different. Nej uh, t said to me, she said, yes, it's seamless. <laughs> it was a great experience. That is profound, truly. I think the Buddhists believe this. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> so I guess yeah. I'm a Buddhist by default. But I, it's not a religious belief, it's a, it's a feeling. Yeah. I mean, I could have said it before in my head and gone, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. But I feel it. Okay. And Nej, you, you talked about Nej. Yeah, Nej is my uh, white uh, girl, German Shepherd, hence mm -hmm. her name, La Nej. Uh, she Snow has, in French. Yes, she has always been an amplifier at the very least. She started doing this on her own. I would sit, I sit usually on the floor, uh, and she, for years now, gets behind me and just either naps or anything. She does comment now and then, particularly with animals who are in big trouble. Uh, then I felt that she was taking on too much energy from my consultations. Mm -hmm. So I said, look, Nez, you've got to be discriminating. Uh, you know, if you really want to help, we've got to protect you. I have to ask this, and I'm sure a lot of people are wondering. Wh when you communicate with the animals, and maybe Nej kind of helps with this, how do they know words or English or French? I mean, how do they know how to, is this, is there a universal translator that you're tuned into, or is it Nej? And along that lines, Will a cat kind of talk the same way a dog does, or a snake, or a goat? That, that is so good. I like the idea of universal translator. Um, uh, I would say most of the animals that are like us mammals, they, we talk the same, at least in my experience. Of course, you know, I don't know anything you don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but snakes, I feel almost to a one, talk slower. Lizards, they have a slightly different way of speaking. Mammals, birds, a little different. But yes, the universal translator is in effect. I talk with people overseas, uh, no matter if they speak German or mm -hmm. French or whatever, it doesn't matter, the animal can uh, 
talk to me in English. Or visually, right? Pictures, yes. images. Movies. Movies. Stills. <laughs> I love it. As Matt, since we're on that subject, um, here at Cutter's Mill today, uh, you've, you've done a few readings. But first, let's take a look at our visit to Fairfield Farms in New Hope, Pennsylvania, where we had the opportunity to watch you communicate with some rescue horses. So this is Scout, and uh, how do you think he's feeling today? You... <laughs> well, um, let me just connect with him for a minute, and... Uh... Um, in my world, Scout is uh, feeling just fine, except for his stomach is a little upset. Does he, does, is his voice like, again, is it kind yeah. of like the voice of a, I mean, do, you're hearing picture, are you seeing pictures or are you actually hearing a voice? Uh, I am hearing his thoughts inside my head. Okay. And uh, he has uh, not a low voice and not a high voice, uh, uh -huh. just a, your basic horse tenor He doesn't voice. sound like Mr. Ed. Wilbur! <laughs> <laughs> I said, I can't, when he, when he pokes his head out, I just keep thinking, Wilbur! <laughs> hey now, Wilbur. He, he's been exceptionally friendly to me. Uh, he was friendly to me from the very beginning. Uh, he knew that uh, his people, Ruth and Josette and me, we would all protect him from anything that would uh, not be good for him. The background of the horses, they're both rescues. Uh, they were both on their way to slaughter. Uh, we had a horse uh, was almost two years ago and we lost him suddenly. So uh, we ended up rescuing Scout. And we, uh, besides that, we decided to take on another horse and his name was Dylan. And he had some issues and some behavioral issues that we were, it was very stressful. And we, we came to the point where we thought, okay, we're, we don't think we're the right fit, but you know, we just don't know what to do. We, we don't want him to think that we're abandoning him, so we need some kind of confirmation. When Emerald came out here to talk to him, he said that he was betrayed by a woman. There was a young woman that he loved. Through Emerald, we got to find out that one day, what happened, it was a pretty day, they were trail riding on the farm like they always did, and he did nothing on purpose, he just he fell. And so she fell too, and she got hurt pretty bad and we knew that's what he meant, that she had betrayed him. And then she never, I guess she was afraid, had some issues, and she never went to see him again. And um, he was in another field with another, one other horse, and he was very sad, he was, that's very angry. Um, I had been attacked a couple times by him. So when Emerald got here that night, the first thing he said to her was, I'm angry and I'm a biter. I mean, and I thought, well, yes, I know that and one. one. And his <laughs> M.O. was to bite. Yeah. His M.O. was to react and bite. Mm -hmm. And that was right on. That was so him. Our scout that we had rescued the year before um, was wanted somebody. He was devastated that he had been thrown away. Mm -hmm. He was welcomed us. And so when we... Mm -hmm got Dylan, yeah. we thought the same would be the same response, and it was like a brick wall smacked us. Oh. And it was very mm -hmm. humbling, because we, much as we tried, we just, you know, we just couldn't make that connection with right. him. And then after we talked to Emerald Knight, we felt so much better that, yeah. that he knew we were right. trying, that, you know, and that we were able to move on and get him to the place where he needs to be. After um, communicating with Scout through Emerald, we realized that how important it was that uh, the way that we communicate to him and what we expect and what we want and what he can expect from us that's been paramount and it's really made a big difference in this boy that was used to really working hard all his life mm. and now becoming just a happy boy. A big boy. <laughs> <laughs> Working with Emerald really helped bridge the gap and she really gave us the, the pieces of the puzzle. She helped us put them together and she really helped make us feel better by giving us that confirmation, confirming what we already thought we knew. And this is about as cute as it gets. <laughs> He likes to keep track of you. Um, he is always glad to see you. <laughs> That's what he says. Um, what do you want to ask him? I wanted to ask him 
how he feels about my other cat, Figaro, but we call my other cat Goody. Is that the black kitty you showed me? Yeah. Okay. Well, let me see what he says. Oh, yeah. Woo. <laughs> oh, what a look. And how old are you? I'm 14. Oh, you're 14. So you know that uh, you're really close to be able to do this without even thinking. Really? Yeah. Oh, Absolutely. Cool. Okay, so just a minute. Let's ask, uh, let's ask him about Goody. Yeah. He tells me that Goody is naughty. And then he shows me a picture of Goody running really fast, like tearing around. <laughs> He's glad Goody is there, but he's, he's annoying. Yeah. <laughs> so I think, uh, I think there's, you know, good harmony, but, uh, you know, why is he so annoying? Hi, I'm Rold. I'm Lucinda, and Hi, Lucinda. this is Karamia. I think she's probably 12 pounds. I don't exactly know. Karamia pulls her fur out, um, and the vet doesn't know why. There's actually fur on the back. I don't know if you needed to connect with her energy with that. Oh. <laughs> it was easy to get. It was on the couch. <laughs> it's really soft. Uh, but, uh, well, thank you. And how old is she, did you say? She's about 13. Okay, 13. Uh, so let me do the thing that I do, which is mm -hmm. take a moment to connect with her. Uh, so this obviously has been an ongoing issue. The reason I say this is because Karamia tells me, well, first of all, how pretty she is. She knows she's pretty. Oh, good. Um, she is really gorgeous. Um, I tell she, her every day. Oh, good. Uh, she, when I connect with her, she has a, a feeling on her skin of being hot, not itchy, uh, hot. It's like a flush. And she's correcting me. It does feel itchy sometimes. In fact, <laughs> right now. So you, you want to ask her why she's uh, doing this? Yes. Yeah. So here's what I'm doing. I'm running things by her. I'm like, is it environmental? Is it food? Is it? But just when I was saying that, when I said food, I felt that flush run up and down my back. So I pay attention to that. Um, so what's the story with her food? Um, she gets dry food. It's mm -hmm. blue buffalo. Mm -hmm. Great food. Again, she's showing me that hot feeling. So if I say food and she tells me hot, I can only believe that it's uh, food related. How have you switched? You probably switch foods and stuff. Tried different things? Over the years, yes. Uh -huh. um, I often will just hold a bag of food to my chest and ask Spirit if I should buy that food. But That's great. Uh, it's always a dilemma when I have to buy her a new bag. But I've been sticking with Blue Buffalo for a while now. Uh -huh. And does that help? Um, I don't think so. So here's... It's, it's intermittent. Like, she uh -huh. used to pull her hair out a lot. She stopped for a while. Uh -huh. And she started more recently to do it again. And, and it's how like long all ago? over the couch, like, yeah. you know, how, drops of hair. How long ago did she start pulling out her hair? Because I'm going to ask her what happened right then. Probably at least a year or more. A year ago. Okay, hold on. So as you can imagine, when I say some things like this that are intuitive, I'm, she tells me her thyroid is erratic. So, one, you can have a thyroid panel done. If you need to know a place that is less expensive, I can, you can email me. Um, because she goes in and out of feeling this hot flush things. So it may make her more sensitive to foods. That, that's my best interpretation. You can always look to the protein source. Like, I don't know what it is for blue buffalo or mm -hmm. if it changes. Um, chicken is usually it. I'm sure sh she loves it, but uh, it, that can be high in histamine. So if you look to the protein source, and, and because she's an obligate carnivore, she only needs protein, protein and organs, basically, and maybe some grass, that you could refine that and maybe get her on track. Maybe a thyroid panel. Of course, we'd never know unless it's verified. Okay. You can email me. Thank you. I'm serious. Yeah. Hey, well, let me just ask her about the love thing. Okay, because we've been concentrating on her fur thing, so just a minute. Um, she's conveying a big picture for me about you, how sensitive you are. So it makes sense to me that you would hold food and ask if it was right. Um, uh, she says that it, you're an empath. When she pulls her fur out, you, you feel stressed and 
<laughs> upset. So uh, she's telling me how, uh, how connected you are by telling me these things. You know she loves you, <laughs> right? Yes. Good. Yeah. Well, she could probably go on and on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Well, she's uh, just gorgeous. Thank you very much. Yeah. Appreciate it. Hey, let me know. Okay. Okay. Great. So where do you want to start? Well, she's a rescue. Mm -hmm. um, she was about a year and a half when we got her. They had found her. Um, she was a breeding dog. She had had a litter of puppies. And they took the pups away. And they found her and a bunch of other moms in a garage. Um, no light, no nothing, like poop and pee everywhere. And just a little clean spot where she had her and her pups. So the breeder knew animal control was coming. So he took all the puppies and just left the females. So I guess I want to know, does she remember or miss her puppies? And was she abused? Because when, like, my husband takes his belt off, she pancakes. She just flattens out. Or, you know, when she hears, like, the jingle of something, like the Christmas bells this year, she would pancake. So I just want to know if they hurt her. And does she remember her puppies or miss them? Or is that a soft spot for her? Oh, my gosh. Well, that that's quite a story. No, she really means it when she was left. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, hold on. Let me just ask her how she feels okay. about everything you said. So, um, what happens is that she sends me a lot of information all at once, and then I try and sort it out. So, uh, because you told me about her circumstances, it's really easy for me to pick up pictures from her. Um, yes, of, not of course, but yes, of course, she does remember her puppies. She was a great mom. She was uh, licking them a lot. She loved them. Some of the other dogs, the mothers, other dog mothers, were not as nice as her, um, meaning that she, she was extremely nice um, when, uh, you know, in all of her dealings. But she was never challenging, but she saw other dogs be hurt. Um, so that's uh, I believe her feeling. Uh, she likes her food. <laughs> good, good. Well, wow. uh, she's doing re really well for someone with her background. Now, what do you want to ask him? He was actually one of our fosters. He's a failed foster. Um, and the reason we kept him is because he has some medical issues. Okay. Um, if you don't mind, I'm going to just take him out, actually. Oh, good. Um, and, uh, oh, he's so pretty. <laughs> and I don't you know, we know at some point we're probably going to have to make some quality of life decisions on him, and I don't know when that is and how he would let us know that. Okay. Well, uh, tell me what the issue is. We're just going to speed through it, and then I'll ask him how he feels. So he has something called chronic rhinitis, and basically it's um, some issues with his sinus cavity mm -hmm. um, and stuff in his face, and um, it just, the chronic infection and stuff like that wears away at the bones in the face eventually. Wow, he looks so good. He's, okay. he, I mean, we're up and down. Okay, well, uh, let me ask him how he feels and see what he says, and then you can uh, uh, ask anything. He tells me that sometimes his sinuses feel contracted. Okay. Like, uh, but uh, I think now pretty good. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure I, I would have known because it feels, he, he feels good. And he also feels frisky. He's very frisky. Very frisky. Uh, that's a good thing. So it's an infection? Yeah, it's um, so just like some people have chronic sinus infections and stuff like that. And it just, it slowly wears away at the cartilage and stuff like that in the face. And it, it then at some point becomes very painful for them. Yeah, the reason I'm asking is so that he can listen in. Because he wonders sometimes when he feels uh, contracted, you know, like everything's kind of closing in and he uh, wants to change it. I mean, you know, he tries yeah. to fix it. Um, so I just let him listen. Okay. <laughs> um, he said a kitten would help him. Okay. <laughs> he needs it. You want? <laughs> you want a new kitten? Yeah, that's really sweet. That's just fascinating. To, to, to watch you work like that, it's, it really is. And I'm wondering, have you ever had a situation where an animal may tell you something like, I'm being abused by my owner? I would say it's extremely rare. I've had animals tell me they're upset. 
It's rare because I see um, a select group of animals. Anyone who comes to me, uh, it, it's uh, self-selected. Animals have told me in previously that they have been hurt or abused uh -huh. or, or what pains them the most. You know, there have been instances where people have done crazy things in Son of Sam because they said, oh, the dog told me to do that. Are animals capable of that kind of cruelty or is that just the thoughts of a crazy person? I think that is a thought of a crazy person. Yeah. Um, I, have, I have met dogs who, uh, well, every creature on the planet perhaps has violence in their heart, but it, it would not be uh, random violence. I think that's a cognition problem. Okay. Yeah. And do you think that are animals all on a journey, like we as humans, that we learn lessons as we go? Are animals on that same kind of journey? They're learning lessons as they go as well? Absolutely. I agree. I, but I think maybe uh, animals might be a little ahead of the curve. <laughs> you know, other animals yeah. besides us. Uh, because most companion animals, uh, I think, are in service to us. Whether or not they're giving us trouble or, you know, acting out, they're still in service to us. It's a, it's a gift. But all dogs go to heaven, right? <laughs> As do cats yeah. and birds, yes? We all end up in the same that's paradise? My, that's my take on it. Yeah? Yeah. Now, we ask all of our guests this. It's the name of the show. Uh, when you go off to paradise, what, what's the impression you want to leave behind here? What matters most to you? I don't care about leaving anything behind. I only care about being in the presence of love and making sure that I remember and everyone I talk with remembers about love. Emerald Decour, whose very name in French, to the heart, a woman who has dedicated her life to communicating the joys, the trials, the emotions, and the unconditional love of the fair creatures that we share this planet with. It's the simple things in life that remind us what matters most. Namaste. Bye.